Coming up on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. We're back for the Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club. Where the competition is getting hot as the countdown for the final five is in full swing. Later, four Mackenzie Tour pros take a moment from the action to give back at the RSVP Clubhouse. <laughs> and then Matt Hansen gives us a few tips on putting like a pro. We have a 30 footer down here, so I'm gonna go with my knee to knee stroke. Easy. <laughs> All that and more next. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. We're down to the final two events on the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. This week, we're in Toronto at the inaugural Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club, a difficult par 72, 7,013 yard layout built in 1992. I've always been a huge fan of club link and National Pines, I remember playing as a kid, anyone from the Toronto area, the GTA can, you know, make a quick trip up to 400 and you're playing, you know, a world-class golf course. It's an event that the guys are really gonna like this week. It's just a beautiful golf course. Kind of goes through the woods, greens are in perfect shape, a lot of slope. It'll be a true test this week. This tournament represents the final chance for the top 60 McKenzie Tour players to qualify for the season-ending Freedom 55 Financial Championship. You know, it really makes the best golfers come to the top. You can't really get away with shots out here. You gotta hit good shots and make putts to be on the top at the end of the week. We spent some time with Toronto native and McKenzie Tour player Sebastian Cermak at two of the 22 club link courses in the greater Toronto area, National Pines Golf Club and King Valley Golf Club. In this area alone, within I'd say 30 minute drive radius, you have 10 really quality golf courses and all with great practice facilities. With club link, you might have seven or eight different options and if you're willing to drive a little further to the west end of the city, you have another 10 more over there. So that really leaves you with a great way to vary your practice and vary the golf courses that you're playing on and you're getting a different challenge each time. Shermack spent the morning warming up at King Valley Golf Club, then later headed to National Pines Golf Club, the host course for this event, to give us a look inside the ropes. We're here on the first fairway, the dog leg left par five, reachable for most of the players. I think it's 521. I'm stuck here with a five iron in, uphill a little bit, about 205. I'm gonna see if I can get it on the green. I'm gonna see if I can get it in the hole. All right, let's go find that. So we're here on the first green, very typical of National Pines. We've got slopes, tiers, shouldered greens on the first hole, first take, see if we can make it. A little aggressive. <laughs> I got 140 yards. Let's see if you can put a pitching wedge on it. All right, let's go make that putt. That's a read you blame on your caddy, that's for sure. Well guys, I hope you enjoy that as much as I did. We're here at National Pines, one of the best courses in the GTA. Definitely one of the best that Club Link has to offer. And just another great stop on the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Thanks for having me. It's a crowded leaderboard in the first round of competition at the Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club. Five Americans climb into a share of the lead with seven under 65s. Among those leaders, Patrick Newcomb. He's coming in hot after his second victory at the Cape Breton Open and cards a bogey-free round with seven birdies. For me, it was just to keep hitting drivers and keep attacking. I hold a couple putts today that, that I haven't been holding, even last week, so, you know, it was, it was good. You know, I hit 17 greens today, just had no stress, and I almost chipped it on the one I missed, so it was just easy, easy day. 
Newcomb isn't the only previous champion going low on day one. University of Georgia alum Lee McCoy scores eight birdies to just one bogey to close out his round. Starting to feel a little bit more comfortable just still working the kinks out on some of the shorter ones, but uh, all in all, really, really solid day. Really happy with the way I'm hitting the ball. McCoy currently ranks sixth on the order of merit, but is confident in his ability to keep climbing into the top five at the end of the season. It's nice to wake up and not really have to worry about your ball striking and just see if the putts go in. So it's, uh, it's kind of a stress-free way to play. 23-year-old Johnny Ruiz also has a stellar round after birdieing three of his final five holes to solidify his spot among the leaders. As the day comes to a close, leaders Carter Jenkins, Scott Wolfs, Johnny Ruiz, Lee McCoy, and Patrick Newcomb sit one stroke ahead of a six-way tie for second. After the break, Four McKenzie Tour players have fun cutting loose with some special fans at the RSVP Clubhouse. And later, we pick up the second round of competition at the Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club. All this and more when this is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Earlier in the week, Andrew Jensen, Damian Tellis, Kevin Lucas, and Tyler McCumber spent the day with the members of the RSVP Clubhouse, an organization dedicated to helping individuals with mental illnesses. The RSVP program is a very special program. It allows us to provide a range of recreation opportunities, vocational support, um, and training, education, and more importantly, peer support. One of the side effects of uh, mental illness is isolation. We know it's important to be connected, so RSVP allows them to connect and have that peer support, which is critical to their wellness. One of the program's main goals is to promote and educate individuals on the Start Talking movement. Um, people have been afraid to talk. We just think if people start talking, it'll demystify, it'll destigmatize, and it'll become part of our regular health conversation. For Mackenzie Tour player Andrew Jensen, the Start Talking movement is something that helped save his life. My life now, I mean, it's pretty good. People just put me on a stage and ask me to tell my story. My story now is relevant. Like I'm a successful person who's survived through suicide attempts. I've been very, very fortunate with the last few years with Bell Let's Talk to travel the country on Bell Let's Talk Day and, and visit different organizations, different communities. And it's just, it's so cool because it's essentially a group of people saying we're all the same and your pain and your struggle, we care about it and we want to help you. You're not alone. This is real life. You know, the fact that they have something where these people can go and hang out, it's, it's amazing. And the fact that this tour gives back to that is really cool too. We think awareness is the key and mental illnesses are real, they're common and they're treatable. You're not alone, please start talking. You know, if someone's hearing this on TV, they might go, whoa, this guy thinks like that? Me too, right? And it's, I'm doing, I'm doing my small part to try to get that conversation to be normalized. Thoughts matter to the people closest to in your life. So if there is someone there that cares, people care. Like, people care more than you'll ever, ever know. So tell someone, get help, because help is real. Help exists, hope exists. Going into the second round of the Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club, North Carolina's Carter Jenkins was one of five tied for the lead. The 21-year-old card seven birdies, two bogeys, and one double bogey, finishing his round at 10 under and just four shots back in a tie for fifth. I've been managing to make a lot of birdies on this golf course. I think I had nine yesterday. So you can uh, afford a couple mistakes when you're making a few birdies like that. Meanwhile, Georgia's Scott Wolfs shoots a second consecutive 65. The 24-year-old cards one eagle, six birdies, and one bogey to finish the day at 14 under. One stroke ahead of Tampa's Lee McCoy going into the weekend. Wolfs has had three top 25s this season, but no top 10 finishes. So he's hoping to turn things around. It's been a struggle this year. I know I've been good enough. The scores just weren't there, and I just been staying patient, staying patient. Hopefully I can produce some results this weekend. McCoy was also tied for the lead after the conclusion of round one. And after his second round, he sits just one back heading into the weekend. 
Johnny Ruiz is also in the hunt, sitting just two off the lead, while Stuart McDonald sits three back. Carter Jenkins and Robbie Shelton sit in a tie for fifth. And although Damian Tellis missed the cut shooting a second round 74, the most rewarding part of his round was when some very special fans from the RSVP clubhouse stopped by to cheer him on. Coming up on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. California native Matt Hansen gives us some good tips on lag putting. Hopefully you improve your putting and possibly make a few of these. And then the action continues with round three of the Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club when this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. My name is Matt Hansen from Los Osos, California. Today on Golf 101, I'm going to give you some tips on some lag putting. My lag putting tip for today is for putts really outside 15 feet. And what you can do when you're warming up, and what I do when I'm warming up, I find my 15 footer stroke, which for me is about foot to foot. Then I find my 30 footer, which is about where my hand's going from my knees to knee. So we have a 30 footer down here, a little bit downhill. So I'm gonna go slightly inside my knee to knee stroke. Easy as that. And that's my Golf 101 lag putting tip for the day. Hopefully you improve your putting and possibly make a few of these. Players are taking advantage of moving day at the Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club. But the stress to finish in the top five on the order of merit continues to grow. Feeling that pressure is Florida's Lee McCoy, who's currently in sixth. After birdieing his first hole, McCoy finishes the day with a three under 69 and sits in solo third. Feeling the same confidence in his game that helped him earn a win earlier this year in Vancouver. Today I made some really, really good putts. I'm really excited that that side of the game's starting to come around. My game is right about where it was in Vancouver. All you can ask is to be in the hunt on Sunday and I'm right there. Looking for his second win of the season, Robbie Shelton finishes with a birdie on the 18th to shoot one of the lowest rounds of the day, a seven under 65. Everyone up there in the top five is playing well this week and you have to keep playing well just to, to keep up with them. It's gonna be a fun Sunday tomorrow. Shelton sits two shots off the lead of California's Johnny Ruiz. With a stretch of eight birdies in 10 holes and another birdie to finish his round, the 23-year-old looks to put an exclamation point on his already standout season with a second win. Once I started making some putts, it gave me some confidence that I don't need to hit it super close anymore and I just stayed patient. I'm not gonna try and focus on what others are doing. You know, I've been playing good all week, so hopefully nothing will change and just go with the same game plan. With a win and three top 10 finishes already this season, Ruiz currently sits fourth on the order of merit and is looking to secure his spot in the five. I've done a lot this year, but I'm still four on the money list. You know, the goal is to be top five and you know, I got to play well tomorrow. So definitely not getting ahead of myself. So hopefully we'll go with a fun day tomorrow and play well. Order of merit leader Kramer Hickok continues to impress, shooting the lowest round of the day, an eight under 64 and he's tied for seventh, heading into the final round. Up next, the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns for the final round of the Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club. Can California's Johnny Ruiz hold on to his two-shot lead to win his second title of the season? Find out when we come back. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The final round of competition is in full swing and the stakes are high at the Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club. 
This is the last chance for players to play their way into the top 60 in the order of merit and earn a spot in the limited field season-ending Freedom 55 Financial Championship. At the start of the day, the pressure weighs on several leaders from round three who struggle to find their footing. Leaders like Lee McCoy. He drops a shot early on the front nine and later has back-to-back -back bogeys on 16 and 17, leaving him tied for fourth alongside fellow American Robbie Shelton. Shelton struggles with a double bogey early in the day, leaving room for a new leader to emerge. Kramer Hickok starts his final round eight strokes behind 54-hole leader Johnny Ruiz. But the order of merit leader starts fast with three consecutive birdies on the front nine, setting the stage for a possible second victory. This course yielded some of the best players for sure all year. Heading into today, I, I was in seventh place, but looking in front of me, there's four guys that could jump me and four guys that are all in the, in the five. So, I, you know, I knew I had to bring my game. I really just had to focus and play well. But not to be left behind, Johnny Ruiz is in hot pursuit. Coming up with back-to-back -back birdies on the back nine and a long putt on the 72nd hole to force the season's 11th event into a playoff. The first three holes of sudden death settled nothing as both Ruiz and Hickok match scores with even par. As tension builds to take home the title, Hickok pulls out all the stops and closes out the round victorious at the inaugural Ontario Championship hosted by National Pines Golf Club. It felt awesome. Heading into the weekend, I was trying to shoot 16 under, that was the goal, and I thought 16 might have a chance. Fortunately, I was able to shoot eight on Saturday and get halfway there, and you know, I really wasn't expecting to shoot eight again. I was just trying to go out there and golf my ball and finish strong. You know, be able to shoot 16 under on the weekend when you set that goal is pretty awesome. I've never done that before, even close. So it's a step in the right direction and uh, not another second place. I'm happy about that. The stage is set. There's only one more opportunity to claim a spot in the top five. Lee McCoy slides into fifth after his T4 finish this week while Patrick Newcomb falls back a spot to settle in fourth. Johnny Ruiz climbs into third after his solo second finish, while Robbie Shelton stands firm in second place, behind Kramer Hickok, who is holding on to the lead on the strength of four top 10 finishes, including two wins. With a victory earlier this season at the Players' Cup, plus the title in Toronto, he becomes the second two-time champion along with Patrick Newcomb. We followed the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada from coast to coast to 11 events featuring intense competition. And there's one more left on the schedule. Players are fighting for the chance to tee it up at the next level and follow the path to the web.com tour that so many others have walked down before. This season, 66 Mackenzie Tour alumni have status on the web.com tour and seven earned their PGA Tour cards by finishing in the top 25 on the money list. 2015 grads Sam Ryder, Taylor Gooch, Ben Silverman, and Ethan Tracy all finished within the top 25. Tracy started his year capturing an early victory at the Club Columbia Championship presented by Serbian Traga and followed it up with two more top 20s to finish in the 24th position. I've had quite an up and down year. I just keep progressing, keep staying at it, and it pays off. Climbing all the way to the 10th spot, Ontario's Ben Silverman netted his first victory at the Price Cutter Charity Championship presented by Dr. Pepper, along with five top 10s. Oklahoma's Taylor Gooch finished sixth on the money list after earning five top 10s, including a victory at the new Sentinel Open presented by Pilot. And the top alum on the list? Sam Ryder posted six top tens, including a victory at the Pinnacle Bank Championship presented by Heartland Chevy Dealers to finish fourth. This kind of just feels like I'm playing more to my potential than anything else. I wanted to be number one on the money list. That's my goal. You know, it still is, and now I'm close. Representing the class of 2016, Conrad Schindler climbed into the 17th position thanks to a win at the Rex Hospital Open. And Aaron Wise, the University of Oregon standout, netted two top fives, including a victory at the Air Capital Classic supporting Wichita's youth to earn his way to the PGA Tour. 
the goal is to get your PGA Tour card at the end of the year. In Canada, when I played up there, I learned a lot about everything that goes with being a professional golfer. It's just being comfortable and, and trusting yourself and realizing, you know, you can compete out here. And this season, several alumni are having great success on the PGA Tour. With 45 top 25 finishes, 20 top 10s, and two top threes, including one victory, proving McKenzie Tour alumni are a force to be reckoned with. Since his victory at the RSM Classic, Canadian Mackenzie Hughes has posted one top 10 and nine top 25s. One tough customer, Mackenzie Hughes. And he's finishing strong. The 26-year-old currently ranks 31st in the FedEx Cup, and with a good showing at the BMW Championship, he could be on his way to the season-ending Tour Championship in Atlanta. Tony Finau sits 39th in the FedEx Cup and is also in position to reach the Tour Championship with six top tens this season, including three top fives. The Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada has paved the way for many players to make their PGA Tour dreams a reality. And now a new crop of players will take that first step towards achieving those goals. Next time, the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada heads to its finale in London, Ontario for the Freedom 55 Financial Championship. The final chance for players to earn status on the web.com tour for next season and earn a McKenzie Tour jersey. Kramer Hickok has a firm hold on that top spot in the order of merit. I've become a better player and I know, you know I got some status, so now I just gotta go out and take care of business this week and, and try and hold on to that number one spot. And only one scenario can keep him from being number one at season's end. A win by Robbie Shelton. How will the action unfold? Find out next time on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Awesome. There you go. <laughs>